contact with us at www.cubnlive.com. I'll be your host today. This is CUBN News. This is Troy. What we got in the news today? We got balance of power on Supreme Court in jeopardy and jeopardy <laughs> as nomination battle continues. Like how they use battle. A bunch of old people sitting on the chairs looking at each other, being rich, taking people's money, taking everybody's money, and living off of it. Trying to figure out all kinds of ways how they can screw everybody up. That's okay. That's life. That's what we do. We work hard. We get paid. We take all that money. We give it to the rich people. And we walk away and have nothing. And be happy for it. Amen to that. God cares about government. And about innocent babies. Our firm belief is that a pro-life campaign can emerge for the Supreme Court. A man or woman as grounded, just as Antonio Scalia, Antonio, Antonio Scalia was. Today and even after this upcoming election, every Christian should carry an urgency to pray for the next Supreme Court Justice, Matt Lockett, Bound for Life dot com. Um, Bound for Life. A telling moment occurred on the national stage, back to March, exposing how the issue of abortion is inescapably linked to the U.S. Supreme Court. Mm -mm -mm. On March 16, President Barack Obama nominated Judge Merrick Garland to be vetted by the U.S. Senate for consideration as a Supreme Court Justice. That some hour, I mean, <laughs> that same hour, Cicely Richards, President of Planned Parenthood, the nation's demonic, demonic, Dominant abortion provider, the dominant abortion provider, was seen at the White House heading to a private meeting with President Obama, the Judge Garland, and Judge Garland. Mm -mm -mm. One chance photo exposed Judge Garland's bias against life and in this indicated how he would rule if confirmed. In nearly six months since then, the Supreme Court has become a presidential campaign issue, hotly discussed as never before, because the legacy of Justice Antonin, Ant Antonin Scalia will loom large over whoever fills the empty seat. The balance of power on the bench is in peril. Mm -mm -mm. The public only knew. I will never forget the moment on February 13 when I saw the news. Alert on his passing, just in associate. Justice Antonin Scalia, dead at age 80. Mm -mm -mm. Too many Americans. He was just another judge. Yet upon looking closer at his opinions, we see our nation lost. One of its great champions for life. And the Constitution by insisting court decisions are grounded in the Constitution. Justice Scalia, Scalia, Scalia changed the Supreme Court and the study of constitutional law itself. A champion of the original text of the United States Constitution, Justice Scalia believed in the balance of powers the court being able to check the power of a president outside proper, proper bounds. Says Alan Parker, president of the Justice Foundation, who has been engaged in pro-life legal ad, 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 advocacy, advocacy, ad, advocacy, advocacy for over 20 years. <laughs> Parker puts current flight fight 
over the uh, Supreme Court in stark terms. And originalist view of a constitution holds that it means today what it was writing to say. However, a living constitution means whatever a person wants it to mean today. Gradually, in ignoring foundational principles, undermines the rule of law. Liberty itself will be the victim. The unexpected death of Justice Scalia set off a flurry of special interests lobbying. Liberal forces are determined to have another Supreme Court justice uphold radical views on abortion, as well as a slate of, prog pro of progressive issues, while pro-life groups have urged the U.S. Senate to reserve its advice, ad serve its advice and consent role for after the election in hopes of a nominee who will ad adhere to the Constitution. Republican opposition to the Supreme Court nominee has remained consistent since March as Senate leaders have pledged to keep the seat open for the next president to fill in 2017. Republican nominee Donald Trump is the first candidate ever to release a list of potential Supreme Court nominees, all of whom have proven track records upholding the value of lives in the womb, traditional marriage, as well as other conservation values. While Senate leadership insists that the next president will nominate the ninth justice to the Supreme Court, a small number of Republican senators are pushing to confirm Merrick Gerald Gardelin if their party fails to take the White House this November. Supporters of the plan argue the best, con best contingency in case Republicans lose in November is to confirm Garland during the lame duck session in December. Before Secretary Clinton would take office in January, they consider it damage control. Confirmation of, a of Garland in December, they argue it, it they argue is better than grappling with an unknown and potentially more liberal Clinton nominee in 2017, according to one news report. Meanwhile, Senate. Democrats have expressed interest in forcing a Senate vote on Garden. Senate Minority Leader Harry Reid recently said, We have a couple of options and we are deciding when to do that. And if we should do that, when and if. He also speculated that we're that where she elected, where she elected. Secretary Clinton would retain Garland as her first judicial nominee. Reed and others claim that the Senate's reservations are about Garland have become a major campaign issue, while voter focus groups have shown otherwise. Given the political climate and posturing this election year, it is certain that when Justice Scalia's successor, whether Merrick Jelen Ger Garland or another president, presidential nominee is confirmed by the Senate, he or she is bound to shift the outlook of the Supreme Court. Will the nation's highest court become more balanced in its ideology or move farther to the left? The identity of the next Supreme Court justice will affect every American's way of life. Many prov provocative issues and critical constitutional questions will continue to come before the court. One justice can decide a case that affects generations. A look at history tells us so. Moving, moving public prayer from public schools, 1962. Legalizing abortion on demand. 1973, and fashioning a new definition of marriage, 2015. To name a few, the policies of any Supreme Court confirmation battle are important. But the substance 
the substantive, but the substantive constitutional stakes even more so. In July of 1789, the people of the United States ratified the Constitution and instituted it as the supreme law of the land. Today, the United States Constitution is the oldest written constitution that has constantly, con continuously remained in effect in the world. It established the first federal form of government as well as the first system of checks and balances to prevent any one branch of government from acquiring too much power. The U.S. Supreme Court's role is to govern within the context of this framework. It is no wonder the Constitution begins, WE THE PEOPLE! Matt Lockett and his team as a Bound for Life international will soon mark 12 years praying outside the U.S. Supreme Court, always wearing red life tape in silent solidarity with the voices silenced in the womb. God cares about government and about in innocent babies, says Lockett. Our firm belief is that a pro-life champion can emerge for the Supreme Court, a man or woman as grounded and just as an Antonin Scalia Antonin Antonin ah, I can say her name Antonin 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 Scalia was today and even after the upcoming election, every Christian should carry an urgency to pray for the next Supreme Court Justice James Madison known as a father of the Constitution once said, the future and success of America is not in the Constitution but in the laws of God upon which this Constitution is founded. Amen to that. In the midst of the continue of the contentious election year, many citizens are looking beyond the Supreme Court higher than any platform of political figure. To, 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 re, to reimagine what one nation under God could be. Debbie Efford serves as president of Dallas-based Initiative 180 and its program of recovery, Peace After the Storm. She earned a bachelor's degree in consoling, counseling from, from Dallas Baptist University. Debbie is the author of Go Tell It, which released in 2015, and a blogger for Bound for Life International, a grassroots movement to pray for the ending of abortion, carry the spirit of, of adoption, and believe for revival and re reformation. Ladies and gentlemen, our country is in deep caca. We basically our need of someone in there that knows what they're doing. With uh, the sharks swimming around the pond right now, such a little pond we have, they're basically trying to pick out who they want and who they're going to put in there. And it's getting really close to that time where they're going to find somebody that we all love and they're going to put in in and make choices for us, which will be a Alright, love you guys. Thank you for coming to CBN Christian Giant Broadcast Network. That was, my friends, Balance of Power on Supreme Court in Jeopardy. In Jeopardy. As nomination battles continue, who will it be?